Hi, Karen Dice here, publisher of Mortgage Currency Magazine, and this is the July 2013 updates that I wanted to share with you. First of all, in case you missed it, we just posted a new video on new construction and Fannie and Freddie's rules on the two-time closing deals. With new construction being really starting to take off right now, you might want to view that short video. It's about 15 or 20 minutes long. Good information. Also, it seems as though Fannie and Freddie and the agencies, FHA, VA, and USDA, have held off for the last couple of months in making any rule changes. But what's taken its place is the Consumer Finance Protection Bureau with all of the changes and the proposals that have been coming down the pike in the last month or so. So I wanted to start out, first of all, with the social media guidelines that come from the FI. FFIEC, who normally regulates the banking industry. So here's the dealio. They're now under the umbrella of the Consumer Finance Protection Bureau, which now the guidelines apply to mortgage companies as well. So what's it all about? Well, the guide is about 36 pages long, but essentially what it means is that if you post something online, which means text, Facebook, social media, blogs, your website, um, forums, photo sharing, things like that. Well, there's a policy in place to make sure that you don't violate any of the other regulations. For example, if you post something on Facebook which quotes an interest rate, then the entire TILA disclosure has to show up, which means it has to have the APR, the term, the monthly payment, uh, the loan amount, that type of thing. Um, and if you quote a payment, so let's say you have $200,000 loan amount and the payment is so-and-so, you still must disclose the APR and all of that information. Now the article lists 18 different regulatory agencies who will be monitoring your social media info, like fair housing or equal opportunity or RESPA. Now, while it's supposed to be part of your company policy manuals, it comes down to what you say online. You know what? You could get your, your, your company in big trouble because I can tell you that the Consumer Finance Protection Bureau is monitoring social media. Well, one of the things that came out with FHA this month is a mortgagee letter reminding you about the Good Neighbor Next Door program. Now, just a recap of what it's all about. It's available to firemen, policemen, and teachers. They can purchase a HUD-owned home or a home in a revitalized area for 50% of the listing price. They have to live there for about a three-year time period. Now, HUD's second mortgage agreement for that three-year waiting time period, so if they move out, the balance is owed. But if they live there three years, the other 50% is forgiven. Plus, the mortgage insurance is only charged on the first mortgage, not the second mortgage. So here's what's new about it. If for some reason the borrower has to move out during that 36-month time period and plans to move back in, for example, if they're in the service and they have to leave for duty, um, FHA now gives them an abatement that says as long as you apply for a vacancy with them that they will extend that second mortgage and that three-year time period. So subscribers, you can download a mortgage talking point flyers for your real estate agents and your consumers. Great information to get out there. Okay, one more thing that's going to apply to you is the updates to the NMLS website. Uh, now, there's 26 pages of updates that were issued on June 22nd, but only a handful of them apply to you. Now, a new section has been added with a composite view of pending, processed, or canceled updates for you and your company's license status. It'll also contain a history of everything, kind of like a big company snapshot and all of the loan officers listed under there. In addition, your course completion and compliance records will be included in the snapshot, 
and they'll be tracking pre-licensing education courses, your federal and state compliance courses, and managers will have access to your individual records. Now the reports are going to be done by the educational management system, which is a third party provider who is supposed to accurately post the courses that you've completed. All right, Consumer Finance Protection Bureau. While new adverse action and receive appraisal forms won't go into effect until January 2014, you'll find seven sample forms posted in the charts and checklists area. Now what will happen is probably your LOS system will update them anyway, but we wanted you to become familiar with the forms, so ch check the charts and checklists section. They've also issued a bulletin that outlines how to monitor employees and lending activity within your company. In other words, they expect companies to police themselves and report any problems to the Consumer Finance Protection Bureau before you get audited. Now here's the dealio. It's a double-edged sword. You could get in hot water or it could be your saving grace. We've also created a checklist for company owners and branch manager, managers and suggest that you share that questionnaire with everyone in your staff so they know what to look for when it comes to suspecting fraud, money laundering, uh, and the regulations beforehand. Finally, you're going to find Consumer Finance Protection Bureau has posted a cool video called Mortgage Rules at a Glance. It's a series of videos that you can break down into 10 and 15 minute segments and view over a period of time. Uh, so, you know, after you've listened to them all, you'll know kind of a huge synopsis of what is happening. Now, there's not much in the way of tweets or Facebook posts this month because most of the updates were for CP, CFPB. As mentioned, you're going to find a mortgage talking points and you'll find a couple of uh, things added to the charts and checklist section. So, thanks for viewing this short video, and remember, getting a loan approved and closed these days is rocket science.